This section will focus on gene organization, recombinations, and then ultimately synthesis of light chains of immunoglobulin. We know that a molecule of antibody is composed of two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains. This light chain can be any one of the two types, that is, kappa light chain and lambda light chain. Both these chains are structurally and functionally similar, but only differs in gene segment coding for these chains. First, let's look at gene and protein structure of the kappa light chain. The gene segments for kappa light chain reside on chromosome number two in the human genome. If we look at the kappa chain gene, it shows that a single X encodes for the constant region of the kappa chain, and that is often referred as C kappa gene, whereas the variable region is coded by two exons. Most of the variable part is coded for by single exon called the kappa variable gene, or V kappa. But the part closest to the constant region is coded for by a separate gene segment called the J gene, or J kappa. We know G stands for joining because the J segment joins the V and C segments. Here in light chains, V segment is absent. There are approximately 35 V kappa genes and 5 J kappa genes, and each of these gene segments have different nucleotide sequences. To synthesize a kappa light chain, a cell early in the B lymphocyte lineage selects a V kappa exon, for example, VK2. And after a process of DNA rearrangement involving the VDJ recombinase, it joins it to a J segment, for example, J2. This is called VJ recombination. The intervening DNA, in this example from approximately the end of V3 to the end of J2, is deleted by looping it and cleaving it out for ultimate degradation. Although the developing B cell has a large number of V genes, or exons, and, to a lesser extent, J genes, each B cell uses only one of the V genes and one of the J genes. Or we can say, the DNA of the gene in a B cell has one of its 35 V genes joined to one of its 5 J genes. And thus it is called VJ recombination. This choosing to utilize only one out of the many exons occurs because of a specialized molecular process that is gene rearrangement that occurs during the development of the B cell, just like in heavy chain. As each individual B cell uses only one V and one J segment, different B cells will choose different V and J segments at random. Therefore, the population of B cells in an individual will utilize all the different V and J segments. For example, here first B cell, can chose V kappa 34 and J kappa 1, while another B cell can chose V kappa 27 and J kappa 4, and so on. As each V and J segment has unique nucleotide sequences, therefore each combination of V and J gives rise to a variable region protein with slightly different amino acid sequence, and thus they have different antigen binding capacity from other combinations of V and J. In quantitative terms, since there are 35 V kappa genes and 5 J kappa genes, the number of combinations, V and J is 35 multiplied by 5, that is equal to 175. Therefore, this mixing and matching gives 175 combinations. This gene rearrangement involves the DNA, encoding the kappa chain folding, so that one of the V region genes is positioned next to one of the J region genes. The DNA is then cut so that the V gene can be joined to the J gene. The gene is now said to be rearranged. Now from here, exactly same procedure followed. From this rearranged DNA, a primary RNA transcript is made by following the process of transcription. And this primary R in a transcript contain both exons and introns. So in the next step, RNA splicing takes place. That removes introns and extra J sequences and generate messenger RNA. This messenger RNA is then translated into kappa chain polypeptide, together with the removal of L gene segment. It is the same exact mechanism 
that was followed during heavy chain gene rearrangement. Now here, recall a concept from previous videos, that the variable region of an immunoglobulin molecule has three hypervariable regions. These hypervariable regions are the continuously changing sequences of amino acids, and these regions are mainly responsible for antigen binding. And so these regions are also known as complementarity determining regions, or CDRs. CDR1 and CDR2 are coded for exclusively by the V gene segment, and so it will differ in different B cells because they will select different V gene segments. CDR3, however, is as coded for partially by the V gene and partially by the J gene. Therefore, both the V gene and the J gene that a B cell selects will influence the antigen specificity of the eye. To made by the B cell. This feature is very important in increasing the variety of amino acid sequences in CDR3, and thus affects the diversity of antibodies. So this was complete synthesis of kappa light chain. The process of gene recombination is similar for lambda chain genes as well. Except that, lambda gene segments are found on chromosome number 22. And its variable region is coded for, by about 30 V lambda, and 4 J lambda gene segments. While the constant region is encoded by C lambda gene, each of the J lambda genes is associated with a different C lambda gene. That can be C lambda 1, C lambda 2, C lambda 3, or C lambda 4. Consequently, four different subtypes of lambda light chain are possible in humans. The rest of the process is same as explained in gene rearrangement of kappa light chain. So, in this way, by trying different combinations among different gene segments of variable and constant regions, B cells develop a vast or diverse forms of antibodies, particularly against those antigens that have entered the body. And to do that, it don't even have any need of thousands of genetic sequences. So, this marvelous phenomenon of nature can produce millions of antibodies against millions of pathogens by using just few genetic segments. So we can say our body is full of such astonishing events. And if you want to learn more about this astounding world present inside the human body, then keep watching such interesting videos on scadia.com.